check out the Electro Harmonix Cathedral Stereo Reverb Pedal. Now, there's a lot of value to this pedal, and I want to kind of go through all the different modes of different reverbs that it has, and also uh, how the knobs work. So even if you don't have this reverb pedal, you might actually learn something about different reverb pedals too because of the parameters and stuff, right? So basically, the first one we're on is Grail Spring, and this is the spring reverb from the Holy Grail pedal, which is also another really popular pedal that Electro Harmonix makes. Now, when you have the feedback and pre-delay all the way off, you're essentially getting a Holy Grail pedal. Now, just one by one through the knobs, the blend one is pretty easy. When you have it all the way off, you're not even hearing the reverb at all. It's just a dry signal, whatever you have going through the amp, right? If you have it all the way up, you're hearing only the signal. You're not hearing any of what you're playing, just the reverb. Right? So we're going to keep it pretty much in the 12 o'clock position for most of it. Now, reverb time is basically how long it lasts. If you have it all the way down, you're not going to hear the reverb last at all. There's not going to be any decay. If you have it all the way up, you're going to have what's called an infinite reverb. And that's just going to keep going and going and going. So one of the cool things about this pedal is you can use it as kind of an atmospheric pedal and create like a lot of cool textures aside from it just being a good reverb for an amp or something like that. So we're going to keep the reverb time kind of in the middle. So that's going to be like a standard decay, right? Now my favorite part of this pedal is actually the damping and the tone button. This is kind of like an EQ control for just the reverb. I think that a lot of reverb pedals tend to be kind of bright, and what I mean by that, it means it's taking the treble response of your guitar and it's incorporating that into the reverb. The nice thing about this is you can get a darker reverb by rolling off the treble up top. So just for an example, this is kind of like a darker setting. Now if I were to have a brighter setting, For me, I kind of scoop my mids out and I have the trebles high anyway, so if I have a brighter reverb, it doesn't really t tend to go well with my personal tone, but whatever. If you have it just at 12 o'clock, you're not doing any kind of filtering at all, but I'm just gonna keep it on the darker side because that's my style. Uh, feedback and pre-delay are what allows you to get some really cool tones. Pre-delay is essentially how long it'll wait until the reverb kicks in. So uh, pretend you're in a cathedral, like a giant church, right? Whenever you play a sound, it's going to take a while for that sound to bounce off a wall and come back at you. So let's say if we set pre-delay all the way up, it's going to be a two second delay between the time you hit a signal and the time it returns, right? So feedback is essentially how many times it returns. So if we have the feedback all the way up, we can do that same thing. In two seconds, it'll come back. In another two seconds, it's going to repeat over and over and over again, right? So, a lot of different cool textures and stuff you can get just by messing with the feedback and the pre-delay. So really quick, let's just go through a couple of these different modes. If you uh, turn the mode button here counterclockwise, it's going to go down through it. This is going to be an Accu Spring. This is modeled after an Accutronic 6 Spring Tank reverb, uh, like a vintage modeling. Of different textures with the reverb time too. Another cool thing is this tap infinite button right here. Uh, remember how when we brought the reverb time all the way up it just had that thing that goes on and on forever? Well you can access that anytime just by holding it down regardless of where your reverb time is. So you can do that and still do maybe like a solo on top of it just to kind of create like a layer. Uh, hall and room I'm gonna breeze through pretty quick. Again, it's emulating a hall. Same thing with the room. I think it's supposed to be like a medium sized room. Now, I personally kind of think that the spring reverb is the best onboard reverb here, but if you were to use this as like a reamp, like outboard piece of gear, and run different things like acoustic guitars or vocals, I think that's where really the hall room and plate might come in a little bit handier. So this is like the plate one. Plate sounds really good on vocals in particular, and on a guitar, I think it'll sound better with a warmer tone. Like right now I've got it set to the bridge. I think this would actually sound better kinda in the neck position. one 
reverse. Reverse is a really cool one, especially just kind of like as another noise generating atmospheric type thing. What it is, it's gonna take the de decay of whatever you do and it's gonna reverse it and play it afterwards, right? So you can hear the inverse of what has just happened. Uh, one kind of cool atmospheric thing you can do is maybe turn the blend up so you don't hear the original chord. All you hear is the, the backwards nature of it. So there's a lot of cool different things you can do with the reverse function too. Now the Grail Flurb one, this is again taken from the Holy Grail pedal, but it's actually better because you can use the tone to kind of EQ how it, well actually I think uh, you can do a modulation thing, right? So a flurb is a flanger and a reverb, right? So you kind of hear the modulation happening. And I think uh, just to kind of demonstrate how you can speed up the modulation with the reverb time, if I do like an infinite. speeding up and slowing down. So it's really kind of like a flanger pedal added on to a reverb pedal, which is also with this infinite uh, tap tempo thing, you can kind of get the freeze pedal. It's another pedal that they make. So the value in this pedal is that it's kind of like a lot of different things in once. And also you have an echo preset, which is also a two second digital delay, which you can set with uh, the pre-delay. You can also tap in how fast you want the delay to go how many feedbacks you want instead of just a single repeat. Now once I adjust the pre-delay knob, it forgets what I tapped in. It's just whatever you've done more recently. So if we want like a longer delay, you can kind of just up the pre-delay time and then you have like a... different things that you can get from this. And it's not one of the cheaper pedals out there, but when you factor in that it's a reverb pedal, it's a noise generator, an atmospheric layering device, it's kind of like the freeze pedal too with a lot of things you can do, and a digital delay, it ends up being like a pretty good value because you can just do a lot of things. It's also stereo in and stereo out. So if you have other stereo pedals on a pedal board, it works really well with that. And also, like I said before, as a piece of outboard gear, if you do a lot of recording, uh, you can just send signals through, like whether it be acoustic guitars, vocals, or anything else. And uh, it's a really versatile pedal that has a lot of value.